Okay, welcome to the Homotopy Type Theory Electronic Seminar Talks. Um, this week's speaker is Pierre Kanya, who will be talking about work done at the University of Bergen. And his title is Symmetries of SN in Univalent Foundations. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to talk uh, at that seminar. So I will uh, present uh, a joint uh, work with uh, Nikolai Kraus and uh, Mark Besam. Uh, on the symmetries of the spheres uh, in, uh, in the univalent foundation. Uh, so I will do that in three steps. So first we will talk about the circle, uh, the one sphere, then we will talk about the two spheres, and then uh, we will go uh, in uh, higher dim dimensions. Uh, it follows more or less a pattern that uh, uh, we followed during this uh, walk. So uh, it's uh, quite, uh, uh, good uh, from that point of view. And um, before I'm uh, entering the uh, content, uh, I just want to have uh, two words about conventions that I will be using. So I will be using the uh, compositional uh, order for uh, pass composition uh, so that it, match, it matches the composition of, of function uh, under univalence. So that might be a little unusual, so just be uh, aware of that. Uh, and also uh, for the pointed maps, uh, my uh, path will be from the point to the image of the point by the function. Sometimes it's in the re reverse direction. Okay, uh, so we can uh, start by uh, looking at the circle and why I said symmetries of the circle. I don't mean symmetries in the circle, which is usually the, uh, uh, the, the uh, which is usually what people uh, consider concentrate on, but I mean symmetries of the circle as a, a type in the universe, as an element of the universe. Uh, so before actually stating something on the circle, I would just want to recall the definition so that everybody uh, has uh, the same. So the circle is uh, the iron negative type, which is defined the following way. We have a base point that I will denote by uh, this uh, point symbol and uh, a base loop, which is a uh, a path from the point to the point, and uh, the circle has an elimination rule that makes all the sorts of it, which is that uh, to define a dependent function uh, for a type family T on the circle, uh, we only need to have two pieces of data, uh, a point in the uh, image of this type family at the point, at the base point, and uh, a loop, well, a, a path over the loop from T to T. So if we have those two elements, uh, then we can craft a dependent function from uh, the circle to the type family T. And of course, uh, this uh, function is related to the data that uh, served uh, to craft it, to craft it uh, which is uh, that f of the point is uh, T and uh, the action on, of f on the loop is uh, L. Okay, so now that we have the basic definition of what we are talking about, uh, I just want to uh, use the uh, induction on the circle once to, uh, uh, to warm up and also because I will be needing uh, some definition. So in particular, this uh, type family T that we ju just seen in the uh, elimination rule can be the constant type family uh, at A for type A. And then a function from S1 to A is just select selecting a point in the type A and a symmetry of that point uh, in the type uh, A. So just to be clear, when I use symmetry, it just means a path from a point to itself. Uh, so sometimes people can call that a loop, but the loop for me will be the basic loop of the circle, this uh, loop symbol. Uh, and uh, in particular, I will, I will want to define uh, this uh, function, which I call minus identity, which goes from the circle to the, to the circle, and which is defined by selecting the point itself of the circle as the image of the point and uh, the loop to the minus one for the image of the loop. So it's kind of the anti-symmetry of the circle. Okay, so now that uh, we have uh, those basic definition, uh, my goal for the first, first section will be to prove that uh, statement, uh, more, uh, more exactly that uh, this type is inhabited. So uh, this type is uh, the type S1 is equal to S1 is equivalent to S1 plus S1. This uh, result, uh, it might be surprising at first when we see it, but uh, we will see that uh, once we understand what's going on here, uh, it's quite uh, uh, intuitive. Um, so we will do that in three steps. 
uh, first, of course, we will identify the identity type of S1 with the type of equivalence from S1 to S1 uh, by univalence. Uh, then we will prove uh, this uh, crucial uh, property, which is that the type of uh, equivalence from S1 to S1 has two connected components, one which is the connected component of the identity function and one which is the connected component of minus identity that I just defined. And so this is my notation for a uh, connected component. So it's the type indexed by the point into parentheses into which we take the uh, connected component. Uh, and once we have done that, well, we will just look at the shape of each of those components and determine that they are both uh, equivalent to F1. Okay, so the first step is already done, identifying S1 is equal to S1 with S1, um, with the equivalences between S1 and S1. This is just univalence. So now let's concentrate on step two. And to do that, I will first need to prove that the identity and uh, the map that I called minus identity are not in the same connected component. So just suppose that there is a proof that identity is equal to minus identity, and we shall try to derive a contradiction. Uh, so we know by uh, induction on this one that what is important in such a P is actually just the image of P on the point and the image of P on the loop. Uh, so such a P uh, will give us a P of the point, which is uh, a symmetry of the point in the circle. And then uh, we will have a path over the loop from P point to P point. But uh, we know stuff about the circle and in particular about the symmetries of the point in the circle. Uh, we know that every such symmetry uh, is uh, just loop to the K for such for, for K an integer uh, because this type is just uh, isomorphic to, to Z as a group. Um, and uh, if we uh, if we denote by k the power uh, which corresponds to uh, p of point, uh, then uh, we can translate uh, this type. Oh, we don't see the loop anymore. Uh, we can translate this type and uh, look at the path at the, at the transport. Sorry, at the transport over the loop, and then uh, this type becomes this type, which is a proposition. So we don't really care about the name of the uh, uh, of the element there. We just care that it exists. Uh, so P, this P, this data P is just translating to an inter integer K uh, such that this equation is satisfied. And in the uh, circle, uh, we can uh, compose pass in whatever order because uh, the loop space of the point is uh, Z and it's abelian. Uh, so this equation uh, translate now into uh, two is equal to zero, uh, which is of course a contradiction. So we have uh, derived false for, from the hypothesis, uh, which is exactly proving uh, not identity is equal to minus identity. OK, so we know that identity and minus identity will not live in the same connected component. Uh, and that was the first step. Now we want to prove that every element, uh, which is an equivalence, will be either in the connected component of identity or in the connected component of minus identity. So first, we, um, we want to, uh, to emphasize that uh, the fact that identity is different from minus identity makes, makes this type in blue there a proposition for every uh, function f from s1 to s1. So usually, the disjunction of a proposition is not necessarily a proposition, but there we have proven that uh, the two uh, cases are disjoint. So the disjunction will actually uh, be a proposition. And this will help us because uh, if I take now a, um, a, uh, sorry, an equivalent uh, phi from S1 to S1, uh, and I want to prove the type in blue, then I'm targeting a proposition. So I can lift all kind of uh, propositional truncation uh, to prove that proposition. And the thing that I will lift is uh, uh, contained in the property that the circle is connected. So usually I can only say that uh, phi of the point is merely equal to the point, but here I'm targeting the proposition, so I can suppose that there is a path actually between the point and phi of the point. So I can suppose that phi is a pointed equivalence if you want. And then uh, I'm just drawing a little uh, diagram here to, to, to see more clearly. Um, then we have a loop from uh, the point to itself by 
taking p, then taking phi of the loop, and then taking p minus one. Uh, so this uh, loop from uh, this symmetry from the point to itself uh, will be looped to the k for some int integer k. Uh, but now remember that phi is supposed to be an equivalence. Uh, so it will have an inverse. And if I apply uh, that inverse, if I compose that inverse with phi, then I will find the identity. Uh, so if I do just a little of that algebra, uh, I will uh, find that uh, loop to the k should have a power for which uh, I find back the loop. So in other words, I need k to be a divisor of 1 in v. So it means that this k is uh, either plus or minus 1. So uh, in the case that it's plus 1, then I can, uh, then actually this uh, p uh, together with uh, this equality gives me a proof that phi is equal to identity. And in the case that it's minus 1, then uh, this uh, data p uh, together with uh, this uh, equation uh, gives me a proof that phi is equal to minus identity. And uh, um, in both yeah, cases, uh, yeah. So your video has frozen. Ooh. Oh, wait, it just came back. OK. OK, Go sorry. Uh, yeah. Maybe my internet is acting weird. But just tell me if it happens again. Uh, so uh, I was saying that, uh, yeah, uh, in the case that k is 1, then uh, I have a proof that phi is equal to identity. And in the case that k is minus 1, then I have a proof that phi is uh, equal to minus identity. And in each case, I take the truncation of this proof, and I end up in uh, the, uh, the type that I wanted to prove. OK, so now we have uh, proven that uh, identity is not in the same component that minus identity, and that every uh, proposition, uh, sorry, every equivalent uh, is uh, either in the connected component at identity or the connected component at minus identity. So we are done with step two, and we are going to step three, which is trying to understand the shape of uh, those components. And for that, I just want to uh, uh, to 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 look at the type of functions between S1 to S1 a little more closely. Um, oh yeah, maybe something that I should say the connected component of identity in the type of equivalence from S1 to S1 is the same as the connected component of identity in the type of function from S1 to S1, because being an equivalence is just a proposition. So it doesn't act on the uh, shape of the, uh, of the connected component. So if I look at the connected component of identity and minus identity in that type, which is on, th on the screen, uh, I will have uh, the correct one. So S1 and row S1, by the, uh, uh, in, uh, the elim elimination, sorry, by the elimination rule of S1, well, we know that uh, taking a function from S1 to any type is just selecting a point together with a symmetry of that point. So we do that, but we just with the circle as a target. So uh, this is uh, the same as uh, the sum over x in S1 of x is equal to x. But now x is equal to x is actually v. So usually we know that uh, point is equal to point is z. And then by a circle induction, you can, uh, uh, you can prove that it's also the case for uh, any x in the circle. Um, so this type is z. And so now I'm, um, uh, I have sum of uh, x in s1 of z, which is just the product of s1 by z. And I just want to look where identity and minus identity are mapped uh, through that equivalence. Uh, so I just follow uh, the step that we did, and so my uh, sorry identity select well the point as an image of the as a, the image of the point and the loop as the image of the loop. So it goes to point one and minus identity uh, select the point as the image of the point and loop to the minus one for the image of the loop. So it goes to point minus one. And so this uh, this composition there is an equivalence. So if I look at the connected component of point one, well, I will have the shape of the connected component of uh, identity inside S1, a row S1. And to say for minus identity, I can just look at the connected component on the right of point minus one. So uh, remember that we have proved that. And what I was just saying out loud is that those two components actually are equivalent to those two components. And then it's really easy to see what is uh, a connected component in S1 cross Z because uh, Z is just totally disconnected. 
So of course, both of those components are just uh, a copy of S1, the one at uh, level one and the, what, the one at level minus one. Okay, and now we are done. We have, uh, uh, we have proved what we wanted, which is that S1 is equal to S1 is actually equivalent to S1 plus S1. And so maybe it was surprising at first, but now we understand it more clearly. There is a two uh, archetypal uh, uh, element in S1 is equal to S1, which is identity and minus identity. And uh, it just happened that uh, their connected components are of the shape S1. Okay, and I'm just realizing that I'm using identity uh, for uh, and minus identity for talking about uh, elements of S1 is equal to S1. So I'm working completely transparently uh, through univalence. Uh, but of course, uh, I should maybe say raffle for instead of identity uh, and uh, for minus identity, the image through the uh, univalence. Okay. Um, so we are done with the case of the circle. Okay. Uh, and uh, we can try to see uh, if we can generalize this result in higher dimension. So first, is there any question about uh, this case, uh, the case of the circle? Okay. Uh, so I will uh, now uh, talk about uh, the two sphere uh, and uh, we'll see how it resemble and also uh, differentiate from uh, the case of the circle. Okay, so first, let me define what is the two spheres for uh, those of you that uh, are not familiar with that. So it's, sorry, it is um, what is called the suspension of S1. And so the suspension is something that can be done on any type, uh, but then I will define it in the special case of the suspension of the circle. Uh, so it's again, a higher inductive type, uh, which have two specified points. Uh, M and S for North Pole and South Pole. And for each element uh, in the type that we are suspending, uh, we select a path between North and South uh, in that new type S2. Uh, and we denote that by meridian of X. So MRD is for meridian. And of course, uh, it's also come for, uh, with the elimination, elimination rule which uh, says that for uh, every type family uh, defined on S2, defining a dependent function uh, to that type family uh, is just the data of three stuff. So the first is an element in uh, the uh, type family taken at the North Pole, uh, small m, uh, then uh, an element small s of the type family taken at the South Pole. And then for every uh, element of the circle, uh, we want a path between uh, small n and small s. Well, they are not living in the same type, same type, so it doesn't make sense. So of course we want a path over the meridian. Okay, and if we have these three uh, pieces of data, then we can craft a function, a fully uh, well-defined dependent function on every point of S2, such that if we apply f to the North Pole, then we get back the small n. If uh, we apply F to the South Pole, we get back the small s. And if we apply F to a meridian of something, we uh, get back the function M, the dependent function M. Okay, uh, so uh, it's visually exactly uh, what uh, you expect. You have two points, North Pole, South Pole, and for each uh, point of uh, S1, you have a meridian. Uh, so you can think of the circle living as as the, uh, the uh, let, uh, at latitude zero uh, in, the, in the sphere. Um, and, uh, and then now that we have uh, the defini definition of S2, uh, can we expect the result from S1 to still hold in dimension two? So the answer is, Probably not, and actually I will be a little more uh, precise than that uh, later, but uh, right now I want to make the parallel with what we did for S1 and what is the big difference. So something that might have been hidden in my argument about S1 is that it relies a lot actually on the fact that uh, S1 is a classifying type of uh, an abelian group, in that case, Z. 
And uh, if you take any uh, group G and you replace uh, S1 by BG here, then uh, the type on the right here, uh, well, that's a good candidate for the classifying uh, space of uh, the center of the group. Uh, so when the group is abelian, well, uh, then uh, it's equivalent to the classifying type of the group itself. And so that was uh, the crux to uh, actually replace uh, the connected component by something which were more, more familiar, sorry, more familiar, uh, this S1, it was to establish this uh, equivalence. And uh, so as I just said, this equivalence actually rely on the fact that S1 is a classifying space for Z. Uh, so it relies on the fact that it's a groupoid and that uh, the associated group is, uh, uh, is abelian. So there we can't really expect that to work for S2 because S2 is neither truncated or uh, at level one or uh, uh, the classifying space of uh, an abelian group. Uh, so what can we salvage from the uh, case of uh, n is equal to one uh, for uh, the case n is equal to two? If we forget about that part, then we still have uh, the plausible uh, fact uh, that S2 is equal to S2 as two equivalent connected components uh, one uh, at the identity and one at minus identity. And uh, in order to do that, uh, then I need to define what is minus identity because I define it for S1, but not for uh, any uh, sphere. Um, so in the case of S2, then I will use the elimination property of S2, of course. And uh, I just need to define where my North Pole, my South Pole and my meridians go. So my North Pole, I will uh, map it to uh, the South Pole in S2. The South Pole, I will map it to the North Pole. And uh, now I need to define a function from S1 to the path between the two images that I just defined. So S is equal to N. And uh, well, an obvious candidate for that is to take the meridian, but in the other direction, because the meridian goes from the North to the South. So if I want something from the South to the North, I just reverse it. Okay, so this is my uh, minus ident identity function. And now I will try to follow the same step as in S1 to prove that actually indeed S2 is equal to S2 as two connected component, one which is the connected component of identity and the other one which is the connected component of minus identity and no more. And uh, we will also prove that those two components are equivalent to each other. Okay, uh, so the first step that we did before for S1 was to prove that uh, those two elements were not uh, merely equal. So that's what we want to, to prove here again. Uh, and uh, this is a case, but it's uh, quite more involved that in the case uh, n is equal to one. Uh, and again, for the same uh, kind of uh, arguments is that uh, the argument for S1 was re relying on the fact that it was a de-looping of uh, a BN group. Okay, so uh, let's try anyway. So we take a, uh, a proof that uh, identity is equal to minus identity. Well, here I already use function extensionality. Um, and then we use uh, the, uh, the elimination rule of S2 uh, to try to derive a contradiction. Uh, so again, I will, uh, because I'm targeting false, which is a proposition, uh, I will uh, be able to lift some uh, propositional truncation. And there I'm using the fact that S2 is simply connected. And so I can as well suppose that uh, P taken at the north and P taken at the south as our um, path that I know very well. And I will take meridian of the base point and meridian of the base point, base point reversed for my two paths uh, at uh, north and south. Uh, and then uh, the last bit of uh, information uh, that we uh, need uh, from P is uh, the action on the meridians. And so uh, we will have a pass uh, that I call pi um, uh, between meridian of the point and meridian of the point minus one. But again, uh, this path needs to live above meridian of x for each x. So now if we look at the transport in the correct uh, type family uh, um, above uh, meridian of x, then this translates to something of uh, this form. Uh, which is uh, already uh, quite uh, uh, not nice to read, but uh, now we'll go a little further and uh, uh, look at uh, the fact that we are 
uh, talking about uh, family, uh, sorry, uh, dependent function over S1. And we know that a dependent function over S1 is actually only two pieces of information, the information at the point and the information at the loop, which give us the data of this form. And then I will just skip over all the details and get to the conclusion because it involves a lot of pass algebra and a mustache lemma on two passes. But eventually, we reach uh, an element of the type meridian of the loop to the power two is equal to reflexivity. And uh, we see that uh, we have uh, still this, uh, uh, this kind of two is equal to zero, which appears, but there it's under the meridian function. And so, well, the application of the meridian function. Uh, and so there is nothing that uh, prevents the meridian to actually collapse stuff. Uh, so we are can, kind of stuck if we just stop here. But hopefully, we have a tool uh, with S2, which is uh, quite uh, uh, powerful, which I think was introduced by uh, Guillaume Brunery, which is the uh, op family. So this is uh, uh, the op vibration is something that is well known in classical mathematics uh, in topology. Uh, and uh, Guillaume uh, imported it uh, into type theory in his thesis. And he's defined the following way. Uh, so it's a type family over S2. Uh, and uh, it is defined by sending the, of course, it is defined by uh, S2 induction. So we just define the image of the North Pole and the image of the North Pole is S1. Uh, we define the image of the South Pole, which is also S1. And so now we need a function uh, that takes any element of the circle into, well, an equality between the circle and the circle. And we select the following uh, uh, function M, uh, which takes e each x to an equivalence, which is defined by this pair x and loop index by x. And so let me explain what it is. So defining an equivalence, an equality between S1 and S1 is an equivalence through univalence. And defining an equivalence uh, between S1 and S1 is, is, uh, more, um, uh, is a first to define a function between S1 and S1. And this function will be given by the image of the point of the circle and the image of the loop. So the point, I map that to x. And the loop, I want to map it to something which lives in x is equal to x. Uh, and remember, I said that x is equal to x is actually uh, equivalent to point is equal to point, uh, which leads us to know that x is equal to x is actually uh, isomorphic to z. Okay, And so in point is equal to point, we have the loop. So we just transport that back into an element of x is equal to x. And this is the element that I denote loop index by x. OK, uh, so now we have defined a type family uh, over S2, uh, which is called the op uh, family. Uh, and uh, the uh, good property of this edge is that by very definition, if I take the meridian and that I compose that with uh, the application of uh, H, uh, then it's an equ equivalent. This is uh, this equivalence uh, that uh, uh, Sorry, uh, uh, this is this, uh, this function that uh, associate to x, uh, this uh, equivalent x uh, to uh, uh, loop to the x. Uh, and so uh, in particular, the equation that I had, sorry, I just need to go back, that I had there, if I apply x, uh, h on it, uh, I find a new equation. And uh, because this uh, h uh, composed with meridian, uh, the application of H composed with meridian uh, will be injective, then I can just uh, derive that loop to the two is equal to refl uh, of the point. And uh, this is the actual contradiction now because we have two is equal to zero. Okay. So we have that ID, sorry, we have that ID is diff uh, different from minus ID, uh, but uh, it was quite much more work than uh, in the case of S1. So now we want to move on to the second step with it, which is to prove that any equivalence is either merely equivalent to identity or merely equivalent to minus identity. Uh, and for that, we will need uh, the, this tool, which is called the degree of uh, a pointed function. So if I have a pointed function from S2 to S2, I can define what is the degree uh, by looking at the action of pi 2 uh, on this pointed function. 
So for uh, the people that are not familiar with this notation, pi 2 of S2, well, for any pointed type x, you can define uh, uh, pi n as the set truncation, <coughs> sorry, the set truncation of omega n of x, and by omega n, I mean the iter iterated uh, uh, application of omega. So if you have type x, you can look at at the loop space at the selected uh, point in X, and then it's still a uh, pointed type, so you can iterate that. And if at any point you take the set truncation, then it's uh, it's called pi n of X, and it's uh, uh, the uh, homotopy group of order n uh, of X. Uh, okay, so yeah, it's a set, and it has a group structure, this uh, pi n, and in particular pi 2 of S2, uh, and uh, pi 2 of uh, F pointed by F0 becomes uh, a group homomorphism. And uh, something which is also proved in uh, Guillaume Brunery's thesis is that uh, pi 2 of S2 is uh, actually Z, it's isomorphic to the group Z. And so now I'm, um, I'm left with a morphism, a group morphism between Z and Z, uh, which is completely determined by its image at one. So this is what I call the degree. So you take one in that copy of Z, you follow this path and you find a new number well, this number is the degree of the function f pointed by the path f0. OK, uh, this degree function has quite uh, good properties. Uh, and uh, it basically comes from the fact that pi 2 is a functor uh, in a certain way. And uh, the degree of the identity function, if I point it with the reflectivity, reflectivity path, then it's 1. Uh, just because then pi 2 of identity refl is uh, the identity. Uh, and uh, if I take the composition of two-pointed function, and just uh, as a reminder, this composition is the composition of the two underlying function, and then we just take the only path that makes sense between the point and the image of the point, which is uh, this one, the application of g to f0, um, pre preceded by g0. Uh, then if I look at the degree of this composition, it's the, uh, um, sorry, uh, it's uh, the uh, multiplication of the degree of each uh, pointed function. So the degree acts as some kind of monoid morphism. Uh, well, it's, uh, uh, its domain is not uh, per se monoid because it might have uh, a lot of uh, homotopy uh, in a higher uh, uh, dimension, but uh, it acts as a kind of uh, monoid morphism. And uh, what we can uh, deduce from that is that, well, it will map a pointed equivalence to uh, either one or minus one, uh, because the only invertible elements in Z are one and minus one. OK, so now that we are equipped with that uh, tool, uh, then we need, just need to have another uh, perspective on the, on the degree function, and we should be able to derive what we want. And this other, other perspective is just to well, recognize the degree function in, in all of the way. Uh, and uh, this will follow this uh, pattern. So we will uh, start at S2 a row. So this is my notation for uh, point, the space of pointed function from S2 to S2. So this uh, uh, star here is for the pointed part. Uh, so we start at this uh, space uh, S2 pointed to S2. Uh, and then we go to S1 pointed to omega S2, then to omega 2 of, of S2, and then finally to omega of S1, which is uh, isomorphic to Z. Okay, uh, so uh, what are all those uh, steps? Uh, well, the first step is uh, the, adjun the adjunction property between uh, uh, sigma and omega. Uh, so uh, the suspension and the uh, loop space uh, operator are uh, adjoint uh, to each other. Uh, so I was planning on uh, drawing over my slide to give a, a definition here, but uh, it just means that the pointed function from uh, sigma a to b uh, are in equivalence with the function from a to omega b, the pointed one. Uh, and so I just use that in the special case of S1 and S2. Uh, so it gives me an equivalence between that type and that type. Now that type we know very well in a way because we know what are the function from S1 to any type is just select a point and a symmetry of that point. But now we are interested in the pointed function. So you can forget about selecting a point. It's not up to you. You, you lost that freedom. You only have the freedom to select the loop. Uh, so of course this type is in equivalence with, uh, well, just selecting a loop there, which is just selecting an element of omega 2 of S2. 
Uh, and uh, the only mysterious part is just this part here. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this function, uh, it's also coming from the uh, op family. Uh, so remember, I get this family H. And if I take uh, a member of omega of S2, so something which is in n is equal to n, I can look at the effect of H on that path, which will be an equivalence between S1 and S1. And then I just look at the image of the point. And I call that tau. And this function, uh, which was mysterious, is just omega of tau. And I didn't just craft that function uh, from nowhere. Actually, this function is the one that uh, appears in the uh, uh, in the fiber sequence uh, of the op vibration. Uh, so it's also uh, coming from uh, classical mathematics at the beginning and in type theory from uh, Guillaume Brunner's thesis. And uh, what is uh, shown in, uh, in in his thesis is that this map. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, the whole composition is actually D, and this is. Uh, um, mostly uh, recognizing um, triangular e equalities and using the uh, the fact that uh, sigma and omega are uh, adjoint uh, of each other. Uh, so it's not completely immediate, uh, but it's not too tricky uh, to recognize D there. And uh, what I was saying that the important part there is that omega T is actually zero connected. Uh, this is what allows us to prove that pi two of S2 is equal to Z, for example. Uh, and uh, because those guys are equivalent, then it means that my degree function is actually zero connected. And what I want to retain from that is this property, which is that for two uh, function, two pointing function function from S2 to S2, uh, if uh, those two functions have the same degree, uh, they live in the same connected component. And of course, the other way, the other way around. Uh, okay. So. Uh, now that we have that, we should be able to prove that every uh, equivalence in S2, uh, from, from S2 to S2, uh, is uh, either in the connected component of identity or of minus identity. So first, we call that we have proved, uh, even if I did not uh, show any detail, uh, that uh, ID uh, and minus ID are not uh, equal, so they live in different connected component. And uh, in particular, it means that for any uh, F, uh, the type in blue is a proposition. Uh, and uh, to prove that, uh, then uh, because it's a proposition, I can uh, use the connectedness of S2 and actually suppose that F is pointed by a path F0. Uh, and then if I uh, recall what I said before, uh, the degree of uh, a pointed equivalence is either plus or minus one. Uh, and uh, moreover, we have that the degree of identity is uh, pointed at, uh, at Twiffle is uh, one. Uh, so the only thing that uh, is missing is that the degree of minus identity uh, pointed with the obvious path uh, is minus one. Uh, and uh, there is a quick way to, to see that, which is that uh, if it were one, uh, then uh, actually uh, identity uh, pointed by this type and minus identity pointed by this type would be in the same connected component. And so in the end, it would say that identity and minus identity would be merely equal, which would lead to a contradiction. And because the uh, uh, equality in Z is decidable, then if it's not minus one, it should be one. Uh, sorry, if it's not one, it should be minus one. So the degree of minus identity uh, is necessarily minus one. Uh, and uh, as we said, uh, just a slide before, uh, the degree function is uh, a marker of the connected component that you are in, right? If you have two functions that have the same connect the same uh, degree, they are in the same connected component. So the function for which uh, d of f f0 is plus one will be in the connected component of that guy. And the one uh, for which uh, the um, degree of f f0 is minus one will be in the connected component of that guy. Uh, and then we can just forget about the fact that they are pointed, and we get that f is either merely equal to identity or merely equal to minus identity. OK, so now we have almost everything for the case n is equal to 2, uh, which is uh, we have the fact that uh, minus identity and identity are not in the same comp connected component, and that any equivalence live either in one or the other. Uh, but I announced that we will also have the fact that they are um, equivalent with, to each other, those both those uh, those connected components. So this is 
uh, actually fairly easy now. Uh, and it's really not dependent on the fact that we are looking at, at S2. We could do that for uh, any kind of suspension uh, because we have a function that takes an ondo function from S2 to an ondo function from S2 and that it just flip it around. Uh, and so formally it takes uh, map F and it maps it to uh, the following function, which sends the north exactly where the south was uh, sent by F. And it sends the south exactly where the north was sent by F. And uh, for the meridian, it takes the action on, of F on the meridian and you just reverse it. Uh, so two facts about that uh, Psi, which are uh, quite uh, easy to, uh, to see, which is that Psi is an equivalent because it is it's, its own inverse. If I apply Psi twice, I did nothing. Um, and uh, Psi of ID is equal to minus uh, identity. Uh, so I have an equivalent that sent a point to another point. So it will send the uh, connected component of that point uh, to the connected component of the, of the other point. So it, it's, it, this Psi establish uh, an equivalence between the connected component of identity in S2 or S2 with the connected component of minus identity in S2 or S2. And as I said earlier for S1, but the fact is also true for S2, uh, the connected component in the uh, function space are exactly the same that the connected component in the equivalences space. Uh, so now we have the last fact that we wanted, which is that uh, the two connected components that compose S2 uh, is equal to S2 are actually equivalent. So we can maybe resume, uh, sorry, uh, sum up the result uh, as follow. S2 is equal to S2 is just the, um, is comprised of two copy of the connected component of uh, the identity in that type. Okay, any question about the case n is equal to two before we go in a higher dim dimension? Okay, so now we'll try to, uh, to go further, but uh, before I want to uh, make a quick uh, uh, remark about this connected component S2 is equal to S2 uh, at the identity. Uh, the shape of this <coughs> uh, element is still quite mysterious. Uh, but uh, Dan actually pointed a paper uh, a, few, uh, a few days ago uh, about a result in classical mathematics that dates back to the 60s, I think, um, uh, that, uh, that look at the uh, space of self-homotopy equivalents of the sphere, uh, which, preserves, which preserve orientation which is basically the interpretation of uh, that type uh, that I'm highlighting uh, in the simplicial model. Uh, and uh, the paper proved that uh, this type is homotopy equivalent to SO3 times uh, universal cover or something. Uh, so in particular, it implies that uh, pi one uh, of that uh, type uh, is uh, Z over two, Z, Z mod two. Uh, and so uh, surely uh, it, Will not be proved. Sorry, it not will be provable that S2 is equal to S2 is equal to S2 plus S2, which was my initial question, because uh, well, that model violates uh, this uh, this possibility. Uh, but I don't know about proving the converse either for now. Uh, okay, but uh, we can uh, uh, we can ask ourselves uh, about the shape of this type, uh, and uh, it's not easy to get an answer. Uh, uh, for, from what uh, I gathered. Okay, so let's try uh, to go a little higher in dimension and see what's happened. Uh, okay, so for higher spheres. Uh, so maybe some of you uh, already see uh, what's going to happen. So for the case n is equal to one, we used very specific abelian stuff. For uh, the case n is equal to two, we use the op vibration quite extensively. Uh, so uh, if you read uh, that part of the hot book, uh, you expect that I will use fundamental suspension theorem uh, for now, and uh, you will be right. So uh, just to uh, recall what is the sphere, the sphere of dimension n, well, it's just the suspension of the previous sphere, right? We have S1 and the suspension was S2, the suspension of S2 is S3, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it has the same uh, elimination rule as before. So the el elimination rule that I presented for S2 
uh, nothing was specific about uh, the type S1 that we were suspending. Uh, so you can take the same uh, elimination rule and uh, copy it uh, with uh, Sn instead of S1. Uh, okay, uh, so as I said, we will use for the suspension theorem, which instantiated for the sphere, uh, give me this particular result. It says that this sigma, uh, this uh, map sigma is uh, 2n minus 2 connected. Uh, so this uh, map sigma, what does it do? It takes an element of uh, the sphere Sn, it looks at the meridian in Sn plus 1 that uh, it uh, entails, and then it tries to modify that meridian so that we get back a loop in Sn plus 1, because that meridian goes from the North Pole to the South Pole, and we want something which is from the North Pole to the North Pole. So we just take that meridian and we compose that with the most obvious path that goes from the South Pole to the North Pole, which is another meridian, but the meridian, the meridian taken at the North Pole of Sn, so this little n is to say that this is the North Pole of Sn, right? Otherwise, you couldn't mean anything. And we just reverse that path, and we compose that with meridian of x, and then we have something which is in the loop space of Sn plus 1. OK, and so uh, the theorem uh, of uh, Feudal-Dental uh, say that uh, this map is uh, uh, 2 times n minus 1 connected. Uh, another fact about connected connectness of map uh, that we should have at our disposal to uh, continue further is that if you take a map which is connected at a certain level and then you look at omega of this map then you lose one level of connectness okay uh, it's uh, very similar to the fact that if you take a simply connected space and you take you look at the loop space of the simply connected space well uh, by definition this loop space is connected but you have you have lost uh, one level of connectness okay so if i look at omega n of sigma, then I have lost n level of connectedness, so I'm left with uh, a map which is n minus 2 connected. Uh, and uh, because I already studied the case s is equal to, uh, n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2, I can start now my uh, induction at n is equal to 2 if I want to prove stuff on higher spheres. And so uh, if I suppose that n is uh, greater uh, or equal than 2, then in particular, this map is zero connected. And that's what uh, is important for us there is that this map uh, in blue, omega n of s, of sigma, sorry, uh, is zero connected. OK, so we will connect that map to another map, uh, which is uh, the one on the top in the diagram there. Uh, so sigma uh, is a suspension uh, operator. Uh, we talked about it uh, for uh, the pointed types. Uh, well, for types actually, uh, but uh, we uh, I, I didn't yet uh, uh, talked about it about, uh, about uh, uh, pointing function. But if you have two pointing types and you take their suspensions, that any pointing function can be uh, turned into a pointing function between the suspended type. Uh, you just act on the meridian as the function was acting before, uh, and that's it. So uh, sigma is a kind of a functor, if you want. Uh, and uh, this uh, action of the functor on the maps, while it's related to omega n of sigma, by those two isomorphisms, so let me describe what it is. So remember that uh, sigma and omega, uh, they are adjoint uh, of each other. Um, and uh, so something which is, uh, so the, the type of function, of pointing function from Sn to Sn is the same as the type of pointing function from Sn minus 1 to omega of Sn. And if I iterate that process, then at some point, I land into omega n of Sn. So we have seen that uh, equivalence in this case n is equal to 2 in the alternative description of the degree. There was a, a chain of two equivalents that were going from S2 pointed to S2 to omega 2 of S2. Well, this is the same, but for n and for n plus 1. But the, the, those are equivalences. That's the important part. And this diagram commutes up to homotopy. So uh, this is an equivalence. This is an equivalence. This is zero connected. So this is zero connected. OK. So now uh, we know that uh, sigma uh, dash is, a uh, well, actually, n minus 2 connected. And as I said, uh, what's important for us is that n is uh, greater or equal than 2. And so uh, it's zero connected. Two other maps that are uh, that are zero connected are the following one, which are the forgetful map uh, from the pointed uh, space of function to the well, the 
so in the space of pointing, fu pointing fun functions to the space of bare functions. Uh, and it's just because Sn and Sn plus one are one connected. Again, n is more than two, so uh, the spheres are one connected uh, for n more than two. And so uh, we can easily prove that uh, those uh, forgetful map are uh, zero connected. So now we have uh, three maps that are zero connected, uh, this one, this one, and this one. And we will uh, hopefully get uh, another one uh, in that diagram. So forget for a moment uh, the uh, zero truncation there. Uh, and then uh, you will have also a diagram that commutes that just says, if I take a pointed function and I forget that it's pointed and I apply sigma as a functor, well, it's the same as actually applying sigma as a functor on the pointed function and then forgetting, forgetting that this function is pointed. Okay, so this diagram without the truncation, it commutes up to a motor B. Uh, and uh, what we have uh, said before is that the map that are vertical are uh, zero connected and the map on the top is zero connected. So if now I put uh, zero truncation everywhere, it means that this one is uh, an equivalent, this one is an equivalent, and this one is an equivalent. So in the end, the map on the bottom is also an equivalence, just by two out of three. Uh, and for uh, completely other reasons, just because sigma is a functor, uh, well, a wide functor, uh, this one uh, truncated is an isomorphism of monoid. Uh, sorry, it's a morphism of monoid. So if it's a morphism of monoid, which is an equivalence, it's actually an isomorphism of monoids. Uh, and uh, uh, something which is nice about isomorphism of monoids, it's that it uh, identified the invertible element on the left with the invertible element on the right. Uh, and the invertible element on the left and on the right are exactly uh, the type that we are uh, interested in, which is Sn is equal to Sn truncated uh, at the set level. Okay, so now uh, we just need to actually uh, launch the, induc the induction because we know that S2 is equal to S2 truncated at the set level is uh, the booleans, uh, the set with two elements, um, because we have proven that there are two connected components, right? Uh, and so if we just uh, take those uh, isomorphism of monoid uh, one step after, after another, then we just prove that for every n more than two, uh, the space, uh, sorry, the set truncation of Sn is equal to Sn is uh, isomorphic to, is equivalent to the set with two elements. So there is two connected components for uh, Sn is equal to Sn. Okay, uh, so we have proven uh, that there are two connected components. Now, can we say something about the shape of those components? Uh, that's always the same thing. In the case of S1, it was uh, quite nice to have an equivalent with S1 itself, can we say something uh, about the shape of those components? And uh, to do that, uh, just consider this fiber sequence. So uh, this is the type of uh, pointed equivalence, this is the type of equivalence, and this is uh, Sn itself. So the first map is the one that forgets the point, or well, the fact that uh, the function is pointed. Uh, and the second map is the evalu evaluation uh, of a function at uh, the North Pole of Sn. Uh, so this is a fiber sequence because uh, the maps uh, such that the evaluation at the point is uh, admits a pass to the point uh, of Sn, while well, this is by definition uh, what is called a pointed equivalence, right? So this is a fiber sequence, and so it entails uh, uh, a long exact sequence on the homotopy type. And uh, the part that I'm uh, focusing on is uh, well, uh, the level one of that uh, long exact sequence plus the end of the level two. And uh, it gives me, um, so uh, maps in the long exact sequence from pi two of Sn to pi one of uh, S uh, of the space of pointed equivalence to pi one of the space of equivalence to pi, was pi one of Sn. And so now if N is greater than three, which is uh, what we are interested in because we already treated, treated the case s is equal to one and uh, n is equal to one and n is equal to two, then, uh, well, s uh, n is uh, simply connected. So pi one of s n is zero. And of uh, also pi two of s n is zero uh, as soon as n is greater than three. So uh, if I have uh, two, uh, uh, two groups which are zero in my long exact sequence, uh, then the morphism in the middle there is an isomorphism. So it gives me, uh, an alternative way of looking at pi one of Sn is equal to Sn as 
by one of the pointed equivalents. And uh, remember that, uh, oh yeah, sorry, uh, something that I didn't say, those type, uh, the point that I take is, all, uh, uh, is of course uh, the identity map. And so the identity map uh, look at, um, if I look at it as a pointed equivalent, then it's uh, connected component, well, uh, yeah, it's connected component is the same as the connected component inside SN a row pointed SN. So this is equivalent to pi one of SN a row uh, star SN. And then uh, this is the same as pi n plus one SN. So this is where uh, drawing over would have been uh, nice. So remember that Sn euro star Sn, uh, we have uh, seen that there is an equivalent with omega n of Sn. And so if I take omega of that type, then I have omega n plus one of Sn. And then if I set truncate on both sides, then I have pi one of Sn euro star Sn on one side and pi n plus one of Sn on the other side. And this has been proved uh, also in uh, Guillaume's thesis, uh, I think that uh, this is uh, Z mod two, uh, as soon as N is more than three. Okay, so we know a little more now about that uh, component uh, here uh, and uh, the shape of it. And uh, this result uh, will give us a little uh, insight about uh, how the result for S1 is not uh, generalizable for uh, higher n. So let me just sum up what we uh, proved uh, uh, up uh, well in this talk. Uh, so we have proved that S1 is equal to S1 is equal to S1 plus S1. That was the starting point. Then we have proved that some stuff are still uh, solvable from that proof for S2, but not the shape of the connected component itself. Uh, then we have proved that going higher, we also have the fact that there is two connected components. And actually, we didn't prove more than that. Uh, we didn't prove the equivalent of S2 is equal to S2, for example. Uh, but we have proved that the uh, shape of Sn equal to Sn prevent it to be equal uh, to Sn plus Sn, because uh, Sn plus Sn, whenever I take the point, it will be simply connected. And Sn equal to Sn as pi 1 is equal to Z mod 2. Uh, and uh, the thing that we did not yet uh, talked about, uh, because it's still work in progress, is uh, do can we actually prove the same that uh, for n uh, more than three for uh, n is equal to two? So I hope so. Uh, the problem is that in that long exact sequence, of course, when n is equal to two, then this is not zero anymore. So we have more stuff in the long exact sequence. So this is still zero, but uh, not on the other side. But maybe we can still uh, have some information from this uh, long exact sequence uh, about the, uh, uh, the uh, non-nullity of that guy, for example. Uh, and then uh, what did we not talk about also? Yeah, we did not have uh, as uh, for the case n equal to two for uh, n greater than three that uh, there is a component at identity and the component at minus identity. And for a good reason is that, so minus identity is not a, a trouble to define, but uh, I cannot manage to prove that identity and minus identity are different actually. Uh, so uh, we have some idea about that and it might uh, at some point uh, and out, but for now it's uh, it's not done yet. Uh, but if we have that, then uh, the two connected components will be uh, equivalent uh, quite easily. And so we'll have the same result as uh, for n is equal to two, which is that there is two connected components which are equivalent to one another. And uh, that's it. Okay, that's great. So uh, we will all keep our microphones muted and do visual applause. And now I will open the floor to questions. Uh, feel free to just unmute your mic if you have a question. I can start the ball rolling then if no one else wants to ask anything. Um, I, I guess I actually have more of a comment. Um, so I think most of the argument you gave for n at least three uh, goes through fine for n equals two. So you could start your induction a step earlier and um, avoid yes. needing to talk about the, the hop vibration and so on. 
So the the only problem I think is uh, when we apply a uh, fraud and sal, uh, theorem. Uh, if I start one step earlier, then I don't have the correct level of uh, connectedness. Uh, but but the map still the map still an, an equivalence on the zero truncations. Okay. So you, you still have the fact that you need at that step. So it might just be a way to organize the argument to to skip this uh, special case of n equals two. Um, and I agree at the end when you were get, using the long exact sequence, that part definitely is different when n equals two. Um, I, I think what you should be able to show there is if you want to flip back a couple of slides. Yeah. Um, so right, where so do you, you got, want me to go? Th th there, that's good. So you've got the pi two of Sn, which is the integers. And yep. the next group is also the integers. Yes. And what you probably want to show is that that map is multiplication by two. Yes, something like that. Yeah. So we need to, to dig into exactly what is this map and try to compute stuff, yeah. OK, any other questions or comments? Um, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Um, what is, uh, so you mentioned a paper that you had found recently about the, the classical case of homotopy automorphisms of this, the two, was that about the two sphere only? Uh, um, yes. Okay, so my, that question is, is anything known classically about the, the higher dimensional case? Well, uh, not that I know about, uh, but uh, again, that paper about the case n equal to two, I didn't know about uh, before Dan uh, point, uh, pointed out to me. And uh, this paper is uh, about also a surface of genus more than, uh, than one. Uh, and then there is a very specific part about the sphere, which is apparently uh, much more complicated. Um, and, uh, but he doesn't talk about higher, uh, higher sphere. He just stay at the level of surface. Um, and uh, for the uh, higher, uh, uh, higher sphere, uh, I just have a, a link to a, a matter of a question that uh, Dan provided uh, with the article, uh, but uh, it doesn't really uh, say much. Uh, so I will not know if there is something in the classical world uh, about that. Thanks. Yeah, and, and unless I was confused about something, the, the article that handles S2, it's from 2006. So relatively recent, actually. Oh, um, yeah, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, when I said that uh, something goes back to uh, the 60s, it was like uh, the result that uh, they are uh, using in that article, but uh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's surprisingly complicated, the description of, of the maps from S, the equivalences from S2 to S2. Um, but well, concrete, yeah, so like... Go ahead. Of course, one expects a moment of groups of spheres to be everywhere here because we're talking about maps between spheres, but. Yeah, anyway, the, the math overflow question that I put in the chat um, in the question summarizes the fact very concisely. Uh, it's, it's, it's a nice, a nice statement. Yeah, so if you want the, the uh, type that uh, the, this well, space, sorry, that uh, the article is talking about. So it, it, it takes the connected component of uh, the self uh, valence at uh, the identity, and then it proves that it's uh, homotopy equivalent to SO3 times the universal cover of the constant path uh, in the double loop space of S2. So this second type is still like not really uh, explicit in a way. Uh, but uh, you know that it's simply connected, you know stuff about it because it's a, a universal cover, but uh, yeah. So it's still not completely demystified for me, but uh, yeah. Okay, any more questions? Yeah, I have a, a small question. Uh, so at the very last slide, you said uh, you didn't prove that the degree of the negation function was minus one or what, what was left to prove? It doesn't seem like that should be so hard. Uh, it doesn't seem so, right? Uh, so uh, it depends how you define a minus uh, identity. So if you define minus identity as uh, the, well, uh, the identity map, but flipped uh, on the meridian, uh, then, uh, well, uh, if you try to, to prove that uh, it's uh, not equal to identity by just taking a proof and try to derive a, a conclusion, uh, sorry, a contradiction, uh, then uh, I'm just lost in the uh, induction. There is induction over induction and uh, I, I don't seem to get anywhere. And already in the case n is equal to two, it was 
quite uh, involved. So I'm not sure that it's the way to go. Another way yeah, to go. Yeah, but how about just said, proving that it's the, by calculating the degree? Yeah, so saying uh, that it's that minus the, one. The other way to go, but then calculating the degree of this uh, minus it. Uh, well, I don't have a good way to do it. Uh, what I know uh, how to I do. I think the idea would be to use Ekman Hilton to just move the minus sign one in, and then you know that it's uh, the suspension of the minus map on the previous one, and then that should help. Yeah, so right? th th that's the crux. Uh, if you define minus id as uh, the suspension of uh, minus id before uh, and that uh, recursively, then it's easy to compute the degree, but proving that this function is actually the same as the minus identity defined the other way is not uh, not really easy. Uh, and then uh, if I want to prove that the two connected components are equivalent to each other, I really want the version where I flip the north and the south. Uh, but it should be equal to the other minus identity. It's just that, uh, well, uh, I'm stuck. <laughs> but uh, I suspect that it is, it is the case, yeah. Could you uh, could you formalize the definition in a cubicle type theory and ask it to evaluate the degree? So we we asked that to under uh, uh, up to a certain degree. So Mark uh, had a, a discussion with him at some point about that. Uh, I don't exactly know what is the status of uh, of this. Uh, project of uh, computing stuff uh, for, I think it was only for the two spheres that we asked uh, him to do that. And there was some uh, like uh, expected uh, result. <laughs> uh, and uh, for the uh, anything yet, uh, maybe Mark, if you're there, you can uh, give your input on that. Well, what you said was right. It, it was as expected and uh... It was also very, very fast, and that was, we hoped that it would be a hard problem for cubicle type theory, but it was it, a hard evaluation, but it wasn't. Yes, so not like the Brunery constant. But I, I think Ulrich's right that you can show using ekman helton that um, you can pass the minus sign through the suspensions. So we, I mean, we can talk about that offline if you want. Are you there, Pierre? I think maybe yeah. we're having trouble with your internet. Oh, can you see me? Uh, yeah, okay, you're back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this was the mustache lemma that uh, Pierre mentioned was an Ekman Hilton argument. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the case n is equal to two, yeah. Yes, that's the and for n equals to two, we have the proof that the two minus identities are equal. Uh, any other questions? All right, if not, let us all visually thank Pierre again for that interesting talk. Okay, and uh, that's it for this week. In two weeks, we have Jamie Bickery uh, speaking at the usual time. I hope to see you then. Thank you very much. <laughs>